you know, there's probably another general relativity out there. Mm, yeah. In all, not just in physics, in all lines of work, in all scientific pursuits. There's certain theories where you're like, okay, I just explained like a big elephant in the room here mm -hmm. that everybody just kind of didn't even think about. Right. Like there could be, uh, mm. for stuff we know about in physics, there could be stuff like that for the origin of life on Earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, yeah, okay. Everyone's <laughs> like in polite companies like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> somehow mm -hmm. it started. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Nobody knows. I find it wild that that's so elusive. Yeah, it's it's strange. In the lab, it's you can't strange replicate. That it's so elusive. I think it's a general relativity thing. There's going mm -hmm. to be something. Mm -hmm. It's going to involve aliens and wormholes and, <laughs> and dimensions that we don't quite understand, mm -hmm. or some some field that's bigger than like. It, it's possible, maybe not. It's possible that it has. It's a field that is different that will feel fundamentally different from chemistry and biology. Mm -hmm. It'll be maybe through physics. Again, maybe the key to the origin of life is in physics. And the same there, it's like a, a weird neighbor is consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right. A weird neighbor, yeah. <laughs> it's like, every, okay, so we mm -hmm. all know that life started on Earth somehow. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how. Mm -hmm. We all know that we're conscious. We have a subjective experience of things. Nobody Think understands that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> the people have ideas and so on. Right. But it's such a dark mm. sort of, we're entering a dark room where a bunch of people are whispering about like, hey, what's in this room? But nobody nobody has a effing clue. Mm -hmm. So, And then somebody comes along with a general relativity kind of conception where like reconceives everything. And you're like, ah. It's like a watershed moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. there, and until it's there. we're living in the mo <laughs> we're living in a time until that theory comes along, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be obvious in retrospect. Yeah. But right now, we're right. Well, this it was obvious to no one <laughs> that space time was curved, but even Newton understood something wasn't right. So he knew there was something missing, and I think that's always fascinating when we're in a situation where we're pressure testing our own ideas. He did something remarkable, Newton did, with his theory of gravity, just understanding that the same phenomenon was at work with the Earth around the sun as the apple falling from the tree. That's insane. That's a huge leap. Understanding that mass, inertial mass, what makes something hard to push around, is the same thing that feels gravity, in, at least in the Newtonian picture, in that simple way. Um, unbelievable leap absolutely genius. But he didn't like that the apple fell from the tree, even though the earth wasn't touching it. Yeah, the action at a distance thing. The action at a distance thing. That is weird too. Well, but- That I, is a really it, weird it's one. It's really weird. But see, Einstein solves that. Relativity solves that. Because it says, the earth created the curve in space. The apple wants to fall freely along it. The problem is the tree's in the way. And the tree's the problem. The tree's actually accelerating the apple. It's keeping it away from its natural state of weightlessness in a gravitational field. And as soon as the tree lets go of it, the apple will simply fall along the curve that exists. I would I would love it if somebody went back to Newton's time and told him all this. Probably some <laughs> like some like hippie would be like, it, "It's a <laughs> gravity is just the curvature in space time, man." I wonder if he would be able to. I don't think there's you know. Every idea has its time. He might not. He might not even be able to load that in. Hmm. I, I mean, it, sometimes even the greatest geniuses. I mean, you can't. Mm. Like it's you need too out of context. You need to be standing on the shoulders of giants and on the shoulders of those giants and so on. I heard that Newton used that as an unkind remark to his competitor Hook. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. The people talk shit even back then. Yeah, trash I love talking. It. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the hilarious things about well, humans in general, but scientists too, like these huge minds. Mm -hmm. There's these moments in history where you'll see this in, in this in universities, but everywhere else yeah. too. Like you have gigantic minds, obviously mm -hmm. also coupled with everybody has an ego. And like sometimes it's just the same soap opera that played out amongst humans everywhere else. And so you're thinking about the biggest cosmological objects and forces and ideas, and you're still 
like jealous and right. And so I know your it's your office is bigger than my office. I know this chair, this <laughs> or or maybe uh, you got married to this person that I was always in love with a, right. a betrayal or something. Like the one woman in the department. Yeah, the one woman in the department. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, but that is also the fuel of innovation, that jealousy, that tension. That's, mm. that's Well, you know the expression, nature. I'm sure um, the battles are so bitter in academia because the stakes are so low. <laughs> that's a beautiful yeah. way to phrase it. But also, like, we shouldn't forget, I mean, that I love seeing that even in academia because it's humanity. Mm -hmm. The silliness, it's, there is a degree to academia where the reason you're able to think about some of these grand ideas is because you still allow yourself to be childlike. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a childlike oh, nature to be no asking question. big questions. Oh, but yeah. children can also be like... Children. Children. <laughs> so, so like, you don't... I think when, um, in, 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 a, in a corporate context and maybe the world mm -hmm. gets forces you to behave, you're supposed to be a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. There's some aspects and it's a really beautiful aspect to preserve and to celebrate in academia is like, you're just allowed to be childlike in your curiosity and yeah. your exploration. You're just exploring, asking the biggest questions. So. Mm -hmm. The best scientists I know often ask the simplest questions. Um, they're, they're really, um, first of all, there's probably some confidence there, but also they're never going to lie to themselves that they understand something that they don't understand. So even this idea that Newton didn't understand the apple falling from the tree, he, had he lived another couple hundred of years, he would have invented relativity because he never would have lied to himself that he understood it. He would have kept asking this very simple question. Um, and uh, I think that there is this childlike beauty to that. Absolutely. Yeah, just some of the topics. I don't know why I'm stuck to those two topics of origin of life and consciousness. But there's <laughs> I'll some, talk about those. <laughs> some of the most brilliant people I know mm -hmm. are stuck, like, just like with Newton and Einstein, they're stuck on that. This doesn't make sense. I know a bunch of brilliant biologists, physicists, chemists that are thinking about the origin of life. They're like, this doesn't, I know how evolution works. I know how the biological systems work, how genetic information propagates, but like this this part, the singularity at the beginning doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. We don't understand, we can't create it in a lab. They're bothered, they, they, every single day they're bothered by it. And that being bothered by that tension, by that gap in knowledge is, uh, yeah, that's the catalyst. That's the fuel that's the catalyst. For, for the- mm -hmm. Discovery. For the, a discovery. Yeah, absolutely. The discovery is going to come because somebody couldn't sleep at night. 